Nothing's more important than us no longer borrowing uh, $700 billion or more from China. One of the major reasons why we're in the difficulties we're in today is because spending got out of control. We owe China $500 billion. In a Democratic poll this spring, more voters named U.S. debt to China as a top concern than any other issue. A nonpartisan group ran a campaign ad imagining the future of our debt to China. <laughs> you can change the future. You have to. Join Citizens Against Government Waste to stop the spending that is bankrupting America. A Tea Party ad with Victoria Jackson imagined a past in which our founding fathers reacted to our debt to China. Congress said the only way out of debt is to get more into debt. <laughs> And then we borrow money from China. <laughs> China! <laughs> so why does U.S. debt to China matter? Hard-working people come and say, Senator, they're closing this factory down and shipping our jobs overseas. Why can't we get tough on China? And I say because of the debt that this government under this president has exploded, we are now dependent upon China. And how do you get tough on your banker? Oh, we're no longer putting China at the top of our list anymore for spying. Really? Now, why wouldn't we do that? Why isn't China at the top of our list? They should be. They've earned it. They sure. They sure They're always earned. hacking into our computers. Right. Same reason why during the Bush administration, when we were having running these deficits and I was talking about Bush, stop with the deficits. Why aren't we complaining about poison toys that they're sending over? Of course. Right. Because we need their money. The co-chairs of the president's bipartisan panel on debt reduction wrote in their report last week, quote, the single largest foreign holder of our debt is China a nation that may not share our country's aspirations and strategic interests. Former Bush Secretary Hank Paulson claims that Russia, in 2008, tried to team up with China to sell off big chunks of their holdings in Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the U.S. government-backed mortgage financers. Russia denies it, but Paulson says the motive was to try and force a U.S. government bailout. After the U.S. revealed this February a new round of arms sales to Taiwan, Chinese Major General Liu Yan told a Chinese government-run magazine, quote, We could sanction the U.S. using economic means, such as dumping some U.S. government bonds. The new House Majority Leader admits that extending the Bush tax cuts will force America to borrow more money. Um, if you have less revenues coming into the federal government, and more expenditures, what does that add up to? Certainly, you're going to dig, dig the hole deeper. The U.S. is already in the hole $883 billion just to China, more than double what it held in U.S. Treasuries just three years ago. Already, American taxpayers pay China $50 billion in interest every year right now. But if foreign powers buy U.S. debt for the next 10 years in the same proportion they hold it now, another 10 years of the Bush tax cuts will put us in the hole to Russia by another $60 billion and to China by another $420 billion, nearly half a trillion dollars of new Chinese debt, plus interest. And that's just based on the borrowing we know about. In March, economist Simon Johnson spoke to the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission about a $170 billion increase in the U.K.'s holdings of U.S. Treasuries. A great deal of that increase, he said, quote, may be due to China placing offshore dollars in London-based banks. At the time, the U.K. held a total of $279 billion in U.S. debt. In the six months since then, that has increased by another $180 billion, making the U.K. and its unknown customers the third largest holder of U.S. debt. Caribbean banking centers and their unknown customers come in at number six, with $145 billion in U.S. Treasury securities. But what about countries less friendly to the U.S.? The U.S. Treasury website lists oil exporting countries as the fourth largest holder of U.S. debt with $230 billion in U.S. Treasuries. This summer, Secretary Tim Geithner traveled to Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, selling them more U.S. debt. How did he do? 
given the extent he won't of tell us. In fact, the Treasury Department won't reveal how much individual oil exporting countries hold or have ever held in U.S. Treasuries. In 1974, Treasury Secretary William Simon struck a deal with Saudi Arabia for the Saudis to start buying billions of dollars of U.S. debt. Secretly. A secret Treasury memo to then Secretary of State Henry Kissinger explained that, quote, purchases under this agreement over the next six months are expected to be approximately $2.5 billion. The sine qua non for the Saudis in this arrangement is confidentiality, and we have assured them that we will do everything in our power to comply with their desires. And so they have. From the Carter administration through today, other OPEC countries also buying U.S. debt in secret. Treasury refusing to break out dollar figures for countries such as the United Arab Emirates, Libya, and Iran. Iran? Treasury forms for those buying U.S. Treasuries include a country code for Iran. 42307. The list of major foreign official institutions includes the Central Bank of the Islamic Republic of Iran and other Iranian entities. How much debt they hold and will hold if the Bush tax cuts continue, only Washington and Tehran know for sure.